We live in a culture that emphasizes success, aiming high, envisioning the outcome you want, and achieving excellence. All of which makes me a bit impatient, frankly, because it ignores a central reality, which is most of adulthood is failure, not success. I'm Randy Patterson, author of The Assertiveness Workbook and How to Be Miserable, and this is a channel with videos on psychological topics. If you like this kind of thing, click subscribe below. So what are we talking about here? Media and social media tend to focus a great deal on the idea of success. If you work hard enough, you'll succeed. If you have talent, which you have no control over, you'll succeed. If you gather the right people around you, you'll succeed. And hidden inside those ideas is an assumption. Failure is bad. Failure is to be avoided. Failure is toxic, traumatizing, terrifying, and permanent. It damages you. It determines not just your self-worth, but your actual worth. Failure isn't something that happens to you. It's something you are. It's not an event. It's a trait. It's your nature. It's your fate. And for that reason, you have to avoid it. There's been a trend in parenting and education over the last number of years, and that's to really help kids avoid the experience of failure. I learned of a school, for example, where they stopped softball games before the end so that the final outcome was ambiguous, could have gone either way. That way, neither team had to lose. They didn't have to experience failure. Now, children are a lot of things, but they're not stupid. If you only get to play seven innings, they will count whoever got the most runs in those seven innings as the winner and the other team as the loser, having failed in their goal of winning the game. Some schools have stopped identifying the winners in sports day races so they don't have two classes of kid, winners and losers, winners and failures, succeeders and failures. If the people around you go to extreme measures to keep something from happening to you, it's only natural to conclude that that thing must be really bad, really dangerous. And so it's appropriate that you be afraid of it. This is how to grow a terror of failure. It's worth stepping back a minute and asking ourselves, what's the point of education? What are we educating kids for? What's the point of parenting? Well, preparing this new human for adult life. Okay, great. What is that? Which planet are they going to live on? If they're going to live on a planet with gravity, we better teach them how to walk. If they're going to live on a planet with water, maybe we should teach them how to swim. And if they're going to live on a planet where failure is normal, then we better teach them to face failure. Imagine how unfair it would be to prepare your child for a planet they were never going to see and leave them completely unprepared for the world they're actually going to live in. Avoiding failure experiences at school and at home is absolutely fine if they are going to live in a world without failure. Or maybe even if they're going to live in a world where failure happens, but it's really rare. But there's a problem with avoidance. It's a way to train the brain to be afraid of something. For example, if you obsessively keep a child back and run away every time there's a dog around, that kid is going to become more and more afraid of dogs. If you expend huge efforts to help them avoid failure, 
They will learn that failure is a disaster and they will become more afraid of it. We will build in a fear of failure and we may build a tendency for the young person to make failure mean something about them as a human being. Failure experiences will become a failure identity. Because failure isn't supposed to happen, the fact that it does happen is meaningful. It means something about who I am. It defines my character. If I am a failure, if I am a loser, then what is the point of trying? No event or experience can take that away. The fact that some other team loses a softball game I'm in doesn't change the fact that I am a failure. It is tattooed into me. And look, I probably don't even have to say the rest of this. Failure does happen. And it's not rare. It's not even 50-50. The majority, the vast majority of adulthood is failure. Think of what you want. You go somewhere hoping to make friends. Most of those people are not going to be your friends. And what you really want are best friends. Most of the people who talk to you are going to be acquaintances at best. Maybe you want a partner. The vast majority of people you meet are not going to turn out to be people you'd want as a partner. And for the vast majority of them, including the majority that you are interested in, you're not going to be it for them. Go on blind dates or people you met on some dating site. 90% of the time, you're not really interested in them. 90% of them aren't interested in you, not that way anyway, and that still holds for the 10% that you think are interesting. There will be mutual interest one in a hundred times. That's normal. But look at someone raised to believe that failure is a bad thing, very meaningful. After the first few dates, or even after a single date, they will think, it's hopeless. I'm a loser and everyone can see it. This is never going to work. And that belief becomes reality. Because either they give up and stay home, or they radiate that expectation of rejection and produce the very outcome they fear. What about jobs? Most jobs we apply for, we do not get. Every one of those we can take as a failure. What about sports? One person is going to get the highest score. Everyone else will not. There are 32 teams in the NHL. Only one of them is going to get the Stanley Cup. The others are all trying to get it, and they will all fail. There are 30 teams in Major League Baseball. Only one will win the World Series. The others will all fail fail in that quest. And there are thousands more people who really tried to get into major leagues and they never made it. Failures. In every sport in the Olympics, there are thousands of people around the world and the vast majority will never go to the Olympics. Of those who do, only one is going to get a gold medal. But it's not just big ticket stuff like going to the Olympics or getting a job or finding a partner. You're also not going to get a parking spot as close as you want it. There won't be a seat on the bus. You go to the store looking for artichokes, they don't have any. You book a day off to go to the beach and it rains. You buy a lottery ticket and you know very well you picked the wrong number. Failure. How about projects? You want to retile the bathroom and you've got a sense of how you want it to look. It won't look quite like that. You want to have your art accepted into the community center show. And it isn't. You plan a holiday dinner and at least part of it just doesn't work out. You write a novel and no one wants to publish it. And if they do publish it, it doesn't sell as much as you think. 
We can envision the future all we want. There is only one guarantee. Whatever we envisioned is not going to be exactly what happens. And all of those experiences can be construed as failures. Think of the people you consider great successes. If you know them, ask them. You'll discover that they've had a huge number of failure experiences, but they know that that's normal. It doesn't become who they are. They learn from the failures and shift their strategy, or they just accept that much of life is a hundred to one shot, and you need to figure out how to enjoy the other 99. All of this is normal life. It's not a tragedy. It's not a disaster. It's not a trauma. Imagine someone who buys a lottery ticket and doesn't win and is devastated. They decide this defines who they are. They are a, a loser. Someone takes up a bow, fires their first arrow, and misses the target completely. So they put it down, go home, and never try any sport again. Failure sensitivity is an enormous problem. A person who is afraid of failure is constantly on the lookout for it. Take a person who's been staying at home for the past few years and goes on public transit for the first time. They ride three stops and get off. That is a terrific step forward. But they had to ask the driver how to pay, or they dropped money at the front, or their shoelace was undone, or someone seemed to look at them strangely. And these small glitches, which are completely normal and expected, confirm the sense that the experience was a failure, not a success, and that they should never have tried in the first place. Failure isn't a part of life. It's most of life. The mission is to accept that and even embrace it. There's really only one way to avoid failure, and that's not to do anything, to retreat away from the world and from all challenges and from effort and to stay inside your comfort zone. But that's something that really is worth fearing because there are worse things than failure, like not living your life. There are other videos on this channel on the psychology of everyday life. Click the subscribe button for more. I also have an online course site, psychologysalon.teachable.com, with programs for professionals and for the general public. And my books, The Assertiveness Workbook, How to Be Miserable, 40 Strategies You Already Use, and how to be miserable in your 20s are available from online booksellers. Thanks for watching.